grateful to have Congresswoman Mary Miller uh, for joining me in this fight. I'd also like to thank the Heritage Foundation, Tiffany Justice with Moms for Liberty, Landon and Robbie Starbuck, and the creator of Lives of TikTok, Haya, for being here. We're here today to talk about the danger of TikTok and the threat it poses to our children, our children in this great country. We know the dangers. They're out there. Everybody knows. You all know the dangers that it poses to our children. And many Americans agree. Here it is. Half of our country states are already banning the app on the government devices. Half of them. Some of them even being controlled by liberals. But right now, but right now there is not one federal law, one federal law in place to protect our children from TikTok in the United States. And this is deeply disturbing. In 2021, folks, Donald Trump, Donald Trump, the greatest president in my lifetime, signed an order to ban TikTok if it wasn't sold by ByteDance in 45 days. And after Joe Biden took office, what did he do like everything else he does? He revoked this order. Under the leadership of Speaker Pelosi, Majority Leader Schumer and Joe Biden, the Democrats voted and passed the Consolidated Appropriations Act of 2023, which banned TikTok on federal devices. And it was signed into law in 2022. What doesn't make sense to me is who did we have here yesterday? You had Jamal Bowman, the, the Democrat from New York. He was here yesterday advocating for TikTok when last Congress he voted uh, for the ban of TikTok on the federal devices. Makes no sense to me. TikTok has over 150 million American users and one third of these are our teenagers. If one Chinese spy balloon poses a big enough threat to our country that it requires military action, boom, we shoot it down. It hung up there too long, I don't agree with that, but boom, we shoot it down. Imagine 150 Chinese spy devices in your homes. This is happening every day, it's happening every day, and it enhances the hold TikTok truly has on American lives. And do you want Chinese government officials teaching your children? Absolutely not. Many people don't know that if the TikTok app is, app is completely different than it is here in China. It's different here than it is in China. And think about that. We know that TikTok is owned by ByteDance, a company that is located within China and controlled by the Chinese Communist Party. In China, folks, listen, in China, their version of TikTok is actually used to educate their children and promote pro-social and pro-Chinese messaging. However, in the United States, the Chinese Communist Party is spreading addictive and harmful videos to young Americans through its algorithm. Additionally, while American children waste countless hours a day, countless hours, you've got children, you know who they are, they're on this device countless hours a day on videos fed by the Communist Chinese Party, Chinese children are restricted to just 40 minutes. So I'm a little confused there. They can only have 40 minutes in China, but here, our kids are on it all day long. They like that idea, don't they? They love that. Even when the Chinese Communist Party, and they know, they know how addictive this is, this should be the first indicator, folks. This should be the first indicator that TikTok is not safe and has no place, has no place in our country. And let's consider a different perspective. How do you think China, Xi Jinping, would feel if I created an app for their children that use, uh, to use that shows the videos that promotes America and how funny. So this is it. Breaking news, folks. Every media out there, this is breaking news. Congressman Troy Nails is creating the app. It's called Ameritalk. Ameritalk. And my app, it's going to go global. We're going to focus on you, China. We're going to focus on you first. It's going to talk about freedom and individual rights. It's going to talk about limited government. That's what this app is all about. It's going to talk about private gun ownership, capitalism. It's going to talk about the Americans. Hey, we should have an opportunity to go over there and buy a few acres, right? They're coming over here buying all of our land. We're going to go over there and buy a few of their acres. Maybe they'll want to sell some to us. 
And then, of course, responsible premium cigar smoking, like I do here with my friends from Ashton. What do you think Xi Jinping would do? What do you think if I presented this to him? Do you think he would bring this into the fold and say, great idea, let's allow this Ameritok to come over and start infiltrating their society and infiltrating their children? You think they would go for that? You all should be shaking, absolutely not. It's not going to happen. Then why in the hell do we allow to happen here? A few years ago, an account was created for a 13-year-old teen, and the type of videos it showed, it made me sick. Our kids have been shown videos that encourage them to hurt themselves. And as a father of three girls, it breaks my heart. Truly, truly breaks my heart. There were graphic videos that were not fit for our young children to view. And how can we continue? How can we continue as Congress allow this to happen? Nearly 90% of my constituents, I polled them, I polled them. 90% of my constituents think that we should ban TikTok, and I completely agree with them. It is time that we take a stand against TikTok and China and stop them from, from harming our future leaders under our own roofs. And don't forget, folks, don't forget under Donald Trump, he was absolutely right. Donald Trump was absolutely right. TikTok is a Chinese surveillance tool and a threat to our country. I would now like to introduce Haya for a few moments. TikTok is a weapon being used to groom our kids. Every single day in America, our children are under attack. Predators are lurking everywhere, trying to get access to your children to groom them. They're in classrooms, hospitals, colleges, and of course on social media, mainly TikTok. Some estimates claim that nearly two-thirds of American teens are on the app. TikTok is designed to attract our impressionable youth, and groomers and predators know this and are using it to their advantage. Over the past few years, TikTok has become a cesspool for LGBTQ activists to target children with propaganda. Take Jeffrey Marsh, a transgender activist who famously makes TikToks directed at kids telling them to cut off contact with their parents. Jeffrey has a large following on TikTok where he constantly puts out videos directing kids to speak to him privately and not to trust their parents. He even links his Patreon in his TikTok bio where he offers kids the opportunity to have a private consultation with him. He's using TikTok to prey on vulnerable kids. That is predatory behavior. Or take the pediatrician from Washington whose video I recently posted. She created a TikTok telling user, users, mainly youth, that puberty blockers are completely safe and reversible. That's an absolute lie. So a kid goes on TikTok, goes on this app, and they think they're getting good, correct information from a credentialed doctor, a pediatrician, and what she's saying can actually cause a kid a lot of harm and irreversible damage. And TikTok is purposely feeding this content to American youth. Through TikTok, trans activists have a platform to groom children by telling them to cut off contact with their parents and offering them guidance on gender transition using harmful information. Over the last two years, I've spent hundreds of hours going through the depths of TikTok to expose its harmful effects on children. TikTok is destroying our youth. I'd like to introduce Landon and Robbie Starbuck. They're an incredible power couple who've been doing a lot to fight for our kids. I'm Landon Starbuck. I'm the founder of Freedom Forever, an organization that works to protect children from all forms of child exploitation in America. TikTok is not just an undeniable national security threat. TikTok is a weapon of ideological subversion deployed by our greatest foreign adversary masquerading as a social media company. What kind of country allows a foreign adversary to deploy psychological warfare on its children without consequence? America. Sadly, it wasn't enough for this administration or Congress to act to protect kids from social media companies like TikTok who've allowed and enabled child exploitation and promoted dangerous suicidal content and extremely sexually explicit content to children. 
This generation of kids is engaging with platforms that their parents are being told have parental control features, but these protections are superficial and inadequate. No American user has informed consent about this Chinese controlled ser uh, service because they've evaded transparency. TikTok has a lot to hide. While under Chinese communist control, they've been invited to maintain access to the most valuable data on earth, the minds and intimate lives of the next generations of Americans. It's unacceptable that they've encouraged kids to come to their platform knowing that they've caused significant, calculable harms to children. Their exploitive and psychologically damaging algorithms and policies foster an ideal environment for predators. And children have paid the price. TikTok is a threat to public health and safety, and it's a national security threat. 141.7 million pieces of CSAM, that's child sexual abuse material, was flagged on TikTok in 2021, and less than half a percent was forwarded to NICMEC, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, to be acted upon by law enforcement to protect our children. Between 2019 and 2021, the number of TikTok-related child exploitation investigations by Homeland Security has increased sevenfold. TikTok must be held accountable. Protect children, protect Americans, and ban TikTok. So I'd like to speak directly to any members of Congress who are still on the fence about how they're going to vote on this and the American people. There's a very simple question that we all need to answer, and it's this. If China had soldiers showing up after school to American schools, picking up kids, taking them to indoctrination centers, and then teaching those kids what they want to teach them to produce a future where our children hate our own country, we would all stand up against it. Congress would act. This wouldn't be partisan and it shouldn't be partisan. If you care about our kids, you have to realize this is not an app. This is a weapon. And you act when your foreign adversaries use a weapon against your children, period. There's not a country on earth standing that has let an enemy go act against their children and did nothing about it that still exists. You must stand up. We ask you, we demand that you stand up and you ban TikTok. And it's not enough to simply go, oh, we're going to try to do some sort of other ticky tacky thing where we divest or something along those lines. We all know the code is poisoned. This is a toxic platform. There's no removing China from the insides of this vile machine. We have to make this hard decision. And that's what you were elected to do. Our elected leaders were elected to make the hard calls where sometimes some people aren't going to agree with you. Some constituents might be upset about it. But it's your job to relay that this is a weapon, not an app. So do the hard thing. And my message to somebody like Jamal Bowman, the Democrat from New York, who came out and said, Republicans want to ban this because they don't have swag. Well, you know what? Maybe we need more members of Congress who are more focused on protecting our country and our kids than if they look like they have swag on TikTok. That type of immaturity... That type of immaturity is how we got here. It's how a nation of children were turned against their country. Patriotism has been defeated in our schools. And we see kids being poisoned every day with ideologies that are harming them. And the harm is something no one can deny. We see the videos. We see the evidence. We see the crimes and the reports of the crimes. This is happening, folks. And for the people who think it can't happen to their kid, can't happen in their town, it's happening close by you and it's happening to somebody's kid whose parents said that exact same thing. So it's time to move on from this, make the hard choice, ban TikTok. And it's like that story is the last thing I'll say. You know the story of the snake. President Trump told it all the time. Where there was a snake, the old lady saw it was injured, she let it in, and she nursed it back to health. And before it went back outside, it bit her. It was venomous and it killed her. And before she died, she said, why did you bite me? I helped you. And he says, well, I was a snake. You knew that when you let me in. This is worse than that because we let that snake into our kids' bedrooms. We gave them the phone that had the snake inside it and the venom is right there. And we left them with really no oversight and said, snake, have at it. Do what you will with our children. It's time to stand up and draw a line. And today is that day. We need leaders who stand up and ban TikTok. Thank you. Next up, Tiffany. We've got Tiffany Justice, the amazing co-founder of Moms for Liberty, a group that is just unrivaled in the effect they're having in America on our schools. Thank you very much. Robbie spoke to the members of Congress today. I'd like to speak to the parents of America. Uh, you don't need to wait for Congress to ban TikTok to get your kids off of this app. So the first thing that you really need to do is take a look at it. If you haven't looked at what Kaya has posted on Libs of TikTok, you should see it. Um, these people are actively coming after your children. 
I got to listen to Chloe Cole, who's a detransitioner, talk about the effects of social media on the young girls that she's speaking about. We have a social contagion in this country regarding gender dysphoria and children who are being told that they have been born in the wrong body. And when they enter onto apps like TikTok, it brings them in down this rabbit hole where increasingly every day they see more and more and more information feeding them this lie. So parents, ban TikTok in your house. Get your kid's phone, take it off. And you know what, if enough of us do it, then they can be mad at us for a minute, but eventually you'll say, well, you know what, so-and-so's mom doesn't let them have it either. So the more of us that say no to TikTok in our homes with our kids, the better off the future of our country will be. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is Kara Frederick, and I'm the director of tech policy at the Heritage Foundation. But I'm here because I'm a mom against TikTok. TikTok is one of the most noxious platforms in my entire life. Yeah, to begin with, at my entire life. And, you know, they had people come out, well paid, sleek people come out yesterday and say, as Robbie said, Republicans don't have swag. Okay, if we don't have swag, we at least have moms and we have people who care about our children. That's what we have on our side and I'll take that over swag any day. So all of these TikTok influencers who flooded this district today, they can always go to another app. They can always grow their social media following on another digital platform. But that mom in Pennsylvania whose 10 year old accidentally killed herself attempting the TikTok blackout challenge, she's never gonna get her daughter back. That girl who paid attention to the social contagions that Tiffany talked about, that TikTok's algorithm supercharges, who can never have kids because she took those drugs and believed those influencers, she's never gonna get her fertility back. We care about what this Chinese controlled application is doing to the next generation and especially what it's doing to their souls. Suicidal content, eating disorders, self-harm, Journalists have been conducting organic experiments, registering as 13 and 14 year olds on this platform, and they find within minutes, minutes, sometimes three minutes, these children are fed eating disorder content, suicidal content, that self-harm content, a veritable onslaught of deleterious material right into their brains, acting as young children. 67% of American teens are on TikTok. 16% of American teens said they are on TikTok almost constantly. 30% of parents claim that their preteens, nine to 11 year olds, use this platform. Studies in Britain are now showing that toddlers have been exposed to TikTok content. Guys, the next phase of teen despair, of children's despair is here, and it's delivered by a Chinese algorithm. We have to ban it today. I want to thank the Heritage Foundation for gathering us here today to speak up in defense of our children and future generations. Being a mom and grandma has been the biggest responsibility of my life, and I can tell you I'm going to fight to protect our children. Our children are the hope of our nation. We are going to give account to God for how we treat our children, how we educate them and defend them. I can tell you Joe Biden and the radical left are on the wrong side of this issue. Americans are expecting their government, number one, to protect them, and most importantly, to be protecting their children. China is the top national security threat to the United States, and they're laughing at us. They're laughing at us while they use TikTok to destroy America's youth with the support of Joe Biden and the radical left. Chinese-owned TikTok is brainwashing American children with inappropriate, dangerous, and in some cases, sadly, de it's deadly content. I introduced a bill to protect our children's privacy from big tech and affirm a parent's right to opt their children out of discussions in public school about sexual orientation and transgender ideology. But parents must understand that the impact, the danger their child's phone screen is, it's one of the most dangerous influences in their life. TikTok was specifically designed to be addictive 
and to have a brainwashing effect on our children during the critical developmental stages of their youth. Like my friend said, in China, the TikTok algorithm delivers educational lessons about math and science to their children, and it limits their daily use. But in America, by design, TikTok bombards our children with pornography, radical transgender ideology, and apocalyptic messages about carbon destroying our Earth. The result is a generation of children who are confused, depressed, and afraid. The Chinese Communist Party should not be allowed to conduct psychological warfare on our children and spy on our phones. I am so grateful for the work of the libs of TikTok, what they've done to expose the woke indoctrination that's taking place within our classrooms. No child should be brainwashed to join a transgender cult while they were at school. We will continue our important work to protect our children and ban TikTok. And I want to remind us again, we will give account to God for how we have protected and educated our children. Thank you so much. I'll close this, but I'd like to thank Haya, Robbie, and Landon. Well said, well said, my friend Tiffany Kara, Congresswoman Miller, uh, for their words. All of you out there, the media, even the dishonest ones, get the message out there, folks. Get the message out there. TikTok is not good for this country. We must stand up. We must fight. We must fight to take this app and get it out of our country. If you want, spend a few moments. Promote my new one now, Emerita. Don't forget that. We're going to get that done. God bless America, and let's start protecting our children. It's China, our number one enemy, infiltrating our children's minds with radical, dangerous ideology. It, there's, it's just, it's bad on every level, and Americans want their children protected. Are we going to put a price on our children? I'm actually, so my family escaped a communist country. Um, they, they had to live through communism, and people we love died because communists are ruthless, and they will do anything to attain power and get to the next level. China's at a point where the next level is overtaking the United States. They don't hide this. We're talking about something where there's an open 100-year plan the Chinese government has. The Chinese Communist Party does not hide this, and they want to overtake us as the superpower of the world. To do that, you've got to do things like this where they're ideologically going to war against our children. And so for somebody like Jamal to say that, I think it's just a pure ignorance of communism and the trail of dead bodies that it's left behind in history. And maybe he needs a history lesson. Maybe he should meet some victims of communism and get to know them. And I'm sure the congresswoman probably has more to say, but I just, as somebody whose family had to escape a communist country, I think that's incredibly ignorant of him and he should get an education on it.